Okay, so welcome to the Monday evening master class, yoga class. We are going to be doing a practice today that will settle and pacify vata. The vata in the body is the ether and air aspects of yourself. And for those of us who are not familiar with the elements and how they show up in the body, ether in your body is all, all places in your body where there's space. So organs where there's space, like your bladder, like your stomach, like your intestines. That is where ether can build up, where you can be depleted of ether or not have enough ether and also have too much ether. Too much ether will make you feel overwhelmed because ether expands. So it's like if there's too much space, you can't, it's, it's too much. You don't have enough a container to hold it, then it becomes overwhelming. And then the other element is air. Air in the body is all movement. So the energy behind all movement is what we call the values. And that's really what we're manipulating. Every time we do a yoga class, every time we exercise, every time we do movement, we are manipulating those subtle forces and they're called the values. So you'll hear me say, we're going to be doing a Samana practice today. We're going to be doing an Apana practice today, Odudana practice. And what I'm talking about is those subtle forces that move up, they move down, they move to the center of the body, they move out from the center and they circulate around, right? So those forces are basically behind all of our physiology. The practice that we're doing tonight is going to calm them. So we're doing a practice that we actually have not done in a long time. It can be a little bit challenging because we're going to hold our poses a lot longer than we normally do. So you'll be in the pose, you'll be holding the pose, and you'll have to work with the breath. So we're also going to be doing a lengthening of the exhale, which also helps to settle and calm vata, right? So if you have a vata imbalance, here's how it shows up in your body. You can't sleep at night. You have insomnia. You have anxiety. You feel scattered. You feel chaotic or spacey. Those are all signs. Anxiety, all of those things are all signs that you have a vata imbalance, or maybe you are vata and you're high vata. So we need to calm all that down. And I see a lot of people in my office for Ayurveda, and I'm telling you right now, so many people have anxiety, like even Kapha constitution people are showing up with anxiety, which means they have a Vata imbalance, even though they're Kapha constitution. Okay, Kapha is uh, water and earth. All right, so it's happening. We're super overstimulated. So this is a practice to help us feel calm, to help us feel grounded, and we are going to do that by bringing in stillness through our practice. Okay, so let's get started with that. And what you will need tonight for your practice to assist you is a couple of blocks, right? Because we're holding those poses, you might need to modify a strap, possibly. If you have a bolster for the end of class, we are going to be doing a little bit longer shavasana because Vata needs that. And then, um, a blanket, a blanket to help you kind of lift yourself where you need a lift. Okay, let's get started. Move my chair. Okay. So we're going to actually start out opening up with our mat. So wide. So we're opening up wide today. Okay, let's get everybody. Good, and then bend your knees, turning your toes out, bend your knees, inhale up, reach. And then I want you to bring your hands together, You're gonna drop them right out in front. So your hands are in front, push them, and then round the back, round. And then come back up, reach and extend. Then turning your toes in, turn them both in, Release your arms back behind you, interlace your fingers, drop the head and lift up off the back. And then releasing and come back up. And when you come back up, you're gonna turn your toes out again. 
turn them out, interlace your fingers, drop down, push round, then come back up, turn your toes in, release back behind you, interlace those fingers. Good, and then coming back up. And we're gonna do that one more time. Pull your heels in, turn your toes out, inhale up. Bring your hands together, exhale, push. Come up. And then exhale, drop back behind you, last one. Good, and then releasing, coming back up. Inhaling up, and we're gonna turn to the right side. Exhale, dropping down into Trikonasana. Then bend the knee and come back up. Reach. So we're gonna do a little bit of range of motion. Straighten the leg, drop back down. And bend the knee and come back up. Nice and slow. Be very deliberate, because that's what Vata needs. Control and stability, Vata needs earth. Straighten the leg one more time. Bend the knee and come back up. Good, release down. And then we rotate to the other side, straighten both legs, reach, drop down, bend the knee, come up. So Virabhadrasana four. Straighten the leg, Trikonasana. Then bend, Virabhadrasana four. Straighten and release. Bend, Virabhadrasana four. Good, release, good. Now we go wider with our feet, go wider. The hands are gonna come up, reach right up. And you're gonna to drop to the right side, bend the knee, drop. So at first here, we're doing some movement, inhale up, and then we're gonna be holding. Drop to the other side. And coming up, reach. Drop to the right. Up, reach. Drop to the left. Up, reach. Drop to the right. So we're gonna do that one more time. Come up, reach, drop to the left. And lift. Good, and now we're dropping to the right. We're gonna hold it here and then turn and rotate to the side. High lunge, drop the knee. One hand is on the leg and then reach the other hand up. And then release down, lift back up, rotate forward again. And then this time, lift your toes up on the extended leg. And then come up, reach, drop to the other side. So you're holding it here, rotate. There's Robin, rotate. Hi, Robin. Good, and then you're gonna drop the back knee. One hand is on the thigh, the other hand reaches up. We're starting to open up the front of the hip. Release back down. Curl your toes under, lift, rotate forward again. You're staying to the left. And now lift your toes up. Good, come back up, reach up. Exhale, dropping to the side. Hold it there, see if you can drop your butt down a little bit further, good. We rotate forward into a lunge. So you're in a high lunge. Then dropping the extended leg, back leg extends, and come back up, lift. Release down. Curl your toes under on the extended leg, go forward, and you stay on the right side. Lift your toes up on the extended leg, hold it. 
and release both feet flat come back up reach up and go to the left so you're holding it here and then you rotate going into a high lunge so we're rotating side to side different practice today we're doing a vata reducing practice dropping the back knee then lift up reach nice come back down curl your toes under lift rotate forward stay to the side keep that extended leg out lift your toes if you can and then come back up reach up Okay, and then exhale, you're gonna open up your arms. Just take them right out. Take the left arm, pull it across and go to the right side and you're gonna hold it there. And then lift back up, reach. Good, and then go to the other side and you're gonna hold it. Now you can use a block here. Okay, that gives you a little bit more height, allows you to lengthen out that spine a lot easier. And then lift, reach, go to the other side. Now see if you can go a little bit deeper, closer to that foot. And again, you can use a block. Even out your breath, one-to-one -one breath. Four count inhale, four count exhale. Come back up reach and go to the other side open up and then lift back up again now this time we're going to drop the hands down reach back up drop to the right side so you're going to drop down again we're doing a little bit of an add-on here rotate to the side so you're rotating towards that right leg drop the back knee and see if both hands can come up now reach good drop down and now that one hand goes to the ground curl your toes under lift up and now rotate your torso towards that front leg Swing the arm around and now you're going to step your front leg back into plank. Lower. Lift. And we pause here. Now watch your chin. Pull it back. Drop your elbows. Drop your shoulders. Draw the navel in. Press back into down dog. All right, so the leg that stepped back now comes up and steps forward. Okay, and then you rotate, stay on that side, drop your butt, lift your extended leg toes if you can. Come back up, reach up, both hands come up. Good, now the, that right hand is gonna reach across. And you're going to rotate, hold it. And come back up. And now the left hand comes across. And rotate. And come back up. Reach all the way up. And then the hands push down to the left side. Drop down. Hold it there. Hold it there. Rotating towards that left leg. Drop the back knee and then either one hand comes up or both. Reach. And then dropping that right hand to the ground. Lift the extended leg, open up. Turning the torso towards the front leg. All right, so pay attention to which leg is in, in the front here. 
because now you're going to swing that upper arm around, step it back into plank, modify to the knees if you need to, that's fine. Lower. And then we lift and pause in Bhujanasana. Pull the chin in, relax your shoulders. And then press back, Adho Mukha Savasana. Same leg that stepped back, now steps forward. You're in that high lunge. And now you rotate forward, but you stay to the left. Drop your butt, lift your extended leg toes if you can. Good, and then we release and lift up, reach. Good, and now your left hand pulls across and you rotate. And then lift, open up, right hand pulls across, reach. Good. And then we lift back up, reach, good. From there, okay, so now you're gonna turn your toes in, turn them in. Interlace your fingers behind you and drop forward. And we're pausing here, pause. Keep lifting your arms up off the back. Relax your head. Here, we're going into a one-to-one -one breath. So you go four count inhale, four count exhale, four count inhale, four count exhale. Once that becomes comfortable, then we switch to a four count inhale, six count exhale, right? So you're holding the pose, working with your breath. And this begins to pacify the vata. This begins to settle down the vata. Not only does the forward fold settle the vata because it's moving the subtle forces down, so does the breath because we're now extending the exhale. Good, and then from there we release. Turn your heels in, bend your knees. So you're gonna drop your butt down and then we lift up into a squat, reach. Stay in the squat, hands come down and then we open up into Virabhadrasana two. Good, looking down that middle right finger. Draw your navel in. And then coming back up, drop back down into a squat, 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 squat. Open up, reach. And we go back into Virabhadrasana two. And remember, we're holding the poses in this practice tonight longer than we normally do. So we'll start a little bit less and then we will move to holding for a few breaths more. Good, coming back, dropping back into a squat and opening up. So we go Virabhadrasana two again and hold it. Look down that middle finger. One to one breath. Remember your breath is always letting you know right where you're at. Hi, Marty. What's doing? Three more breaths. Yeah. 
Good, and then releasing down, squat. Open up, and we go very two to the other side. Your shoulders start to feel like, whoo, holding up my arms, this is hard. Just relax them a little bit, it's fine. Come back up. Looking down that middle left finger. And again, we're lengthening the breath. Two more breaths. So we're trying to bring still and coming up, releasing down. So we're going wide leg again, but you're gonna turn your toes in. Two fingers are gonna drop down and wrap around the big toe, connect to the thumb. And you drop and relax the head. Good, and then from there, turning your heels back in, turning your toes out, drop your butt down, come back up into a squat. Now, exhale, Virabhadrasana two, we're holding it for three breaths. And then we go into Virabhadrasana four. So notice that your body responds to holding these poses very differently than when we move through a flow. So you're in Viravadrasana four, the arm is reaching up, you're looking up at that arm, then straightening the leg. Pull your back foot in a little bit, line up the front heel with the arch of the back foot. And now we drop into Trikonasana. And you can use a block if you would like. Both legs straight. Settling the breath, one-to-one -one breath, and we're holding it, holding that pose. Bringing in stillness, being as stable as you can, trying to eliminate any kind of micro adjusting. You're staying with the pose. Staying with the breath, bringing in stillness. Good, then releasing your upper arm to your low back, turn your head, look at your big toe, and you're going to reach out for half moon Ardhachandrasana. So drag the back leg in if you're using a block, take it with you. And then slowly lift the back leg up and release the arm from your back. Draw your navel in. Make sure that the leg that's in the air is just as activated as your standing leg. If you feel stable today, turn your head and look to the side. And then from there, we lower, come right back into Trikonasana. Now swing the upper arm around and we're gonna step the front leg back. Go right into Chaturanga Dandasana, lower. Lift up and hold Bhujanasana. Drop your shoulders. Elbows in. 
and then pressing back into Adho Mukha Savasana, down dog and hold. Picking up that leg that you stepped back, now it steps forward and you're in a high lunge. And then we rotate forward. All right, we're going back into two fingers wrapping around the big toes and drop. Pull, bend those elbows. Good, relax your head, relax your head. All right, turning your heels in, coming back up. So you bend and squat, come up, drop back down and we go into Virabhadrasana two on the other side. And remember we're holding these poses longer. So get into the pose and become very still. Settle the vata. And then move into Virabhadrasana four. Same thing. Turn your head, look up at the upper arm. Good, and then straightening your leg. Pull your back leg in a little bit. You want to line up the front heel with the arch of the back foot and trikonasana. So if you don't have a block, you can just bring your hand to the shin. If you do want to bring your hand to the ground, it's on the baby toe side with or without a block. Lean back, line up the torso with the front leg. You could pop up on those fingertips. That just gives you a little bit more height. Now, if you're bending your knee, you're too far down. You need to grab a block and use it. It's good. It's fine. Do not have a bent knee. You want to be contracting the quadricep on that leg. Right? We're more interested in the energetics of the pose. Like, how are we manipulating those forces? How are we using this practice to support our life? We're more interested in that. We're not interested in, oh, I'm gonna take this pose and do the most extreme version. If you can do that, that's great. But if you can't, it doesn't matter because it's more the energetics that it's important. Upper arm then releases to the low back. Turn your head and look at your big toe. And again, you're gonna reach out with or without a block. Slide your back leg in. And then once you feel stable there, you're gonna start lifting the back leg. And then remember your hand placement is the length of your torso. That leg in the air is just as activated as your standing leg. Release your arm. If you feel stable, turn your head and look to the side. And then from there, slowly lower, back into Trikonasana. Back into Trikonasana. Good, then swinging the upper arm around. You're in a high lunge. Front leg, front foot is going to step back into plank. Chaturanga Dandasana, lower. And then we pause in. Cobra, Bhujanasana, drop the shoulders, relax your face. Press back into down dog. Good, and then from here, we're gonna take child's pose. So drop down, open up the knees, big toes together and release forward.
So you want to completely relax, settle the breath, relax the arms, relax the face. Good, so for the next pose, you might need a strap. Okay, so if you have one close by, great. Don't worry about it if you don't. So we're gonna go forward and lower onto the tummy. Come up onto your elbows. Good. Pull up one leg. Pull up one leg. And I'm gonna then release back down and reach back, grab my foot. Now, if you can't grab your foot, here's where you're gonna use a strap. You're gonna drop down and then turn your fingers towards you. Okay, so you turn fingers towards you. I had to pop back up for that. So if you're down here, you could just have your fingers facing away. I had to kind of come up to turn my fingers towards me. So it's a nice quadricep stretch. Fingertips are facing your head, if you can do it. If you can't, it's fine, right? So what? And then we release. From there, relax and just let the body settle. And I want you to move your hips side to side, kind of shake out your legs. And if you want to bring your legs up, do a reverse windshield wiper. Good, then you release and you're gonna grab the other foot. Come up, turn your fingers towards you if you can. If you can't, just keep them away. Otherwise, turn them towards your head. So you're pushing down for a quadricep stretch. Now, if you need to use a strap, that's fine. All good. Good, and then from there, release. And so now we're gonna push back, push back, curl your toes under, go all the way back and extend the arms. Reach your hands out a little further. And then we go forward again and lower. Okay, so this time both feet come up. And you're gonna reach back and grab at the ankle. And if you can't, you're gonna use a strap. Flex your feet. And then lift your legs up and lift your upper body up, reach. Downward facing bow, lift. Now relax your face. and then release. Drop back down again. You're gonna curl your toes under and release back. Walk your hands forward. Good, and then we come forward again. We're gonna be in a crawling position and you're gonna pull one leg forward. So I'm gonna pull one leg forward. So your right leg is fine. And then you walk that foot over to the side. So we're going right into pigeon. You might need a block to go underneath the glutes or here's where a nice blanket is helpful. Your blanket and you're gonna walk all the way over into pigeon.
Now see if you can take the extended leg and move it back a little further. So curl your toes under and reach back further. So the opposite hip, you keep moving it down. Keep dropping it down. And then see if you can lower. Drop down. Good, then we're gonna lift up. Now I'm gonna pull my blanket out and then step back. Down dog. Pause there. Good, and now we pick up the other leg and step it forward, drop the back knee. Good, we're gonna take it into a pigeon. So grab your block or your blanket, put it underneath the glutes on the other side, walk that foot over until the knee drops. Stay lifted. Hold it. Good, now see if you can curl your toes under and extend the leg behind you further back. At the same time, you drop the hip forward. It's big, stay lifted. Breathe, even out your breath. Bring in stillness. All right, and then we lower if you can. Again, settling the breath. Good, and then we're going to lift up and rotate forward. So I do want you to use your blanket to sit on, prop yourself up, open up. And we'll do a little side to side, taking it to one side. Go to the other side. See if you can drop deeper, go to the inside of the leg, drop down. If you can't, that's okay. Drop down and see if you can grab the big toe with the upper arm. Good. 
and then release. Same thing, but on the other side, drop to the inside and then reach, grab the toe. And then lifting up. And now we turn the torso that leg. So turn. And you want the torso to go down flat and right over the leg. Drop the head down. And then lifting up, going to the other side again, turning the whole torso turns. And then you take the torso, flatten it out right over the leg. Good and lifting up and then we'll take it center. So you have some options here. Hands can either go right out onto the legs and you drop down that way, or you can bring your hands to the front this way and drop down. Up. We're going to pull out. Then, so right leg is extended opposite, okay, on the opposite side. Lift up tall and then rotate. And then releasing, extending the leg, pulling the other leg, put over, sit up tall, lift your chest, and again, rotate. And from there, we're going to do another forward fold. So this time we work with the breath. 
So we start out with a one-to-one -one breath. So four count inhale, four count exhale. Do that about two, three times, maybe four. Just make sure that it's nice and smooth and even. And then start to lengthen your exhale to six counts. Then eight counts, 10 counts, 12. Okay, so you are only doing what's comfortable. You do not extend beyond that. So if six counts, exhale is what's comfortable for you, you stay with that. Four count inhale, six count exhale. If you have a lot of comfort in your breath right now, then you can lengthen further. Listen to your body, listen to what's going on. One more breath. All right, and then slowly coming up from there. And we're going to be doing a bridge, a little rotation, and then setting ourselves up for Shavasana. So make sure you have everything close by that you need. Taking it onto your back. And counter posturing that forward fold, press up. So you want to lift up into a nice bridge. Good. And then we release from there. Arms go out to the side, knees come up, rotate to one side, extending the left arm, look to the left. And then those legs go up and to go to the left, extending your right arm and look to the right. Good, and then from there, we're setting ourselves up for a nice Shavasana. So bolster, if you have one, goes underneath the knees, or you can use a blanket. I do want you to be nice and warm, so cover yourself up. Put a sweatshirt on, put your so socks on. Make sure that you have something to cover your eyes, either an eye pillow, an eye mask, a dark cloth. Arms are going to rest at your sides, palms up in a receiving position. Close and cover your eyes. We bring that body into total stillness. So Shavasana means corpse pose. So you're literally laying in stillness, completely releasing, letting go. 
once you get into the position, you just relax. Let the body melt down into the floor. Merge with the ground. Feel the earth. Feel all parts of your body that are connected to the ground. Let it help you feel more grounded. No longer shaping the breath, you let go of the breath, surrendering to the natural rhythm of breath. And begin to notice that as the body relaxes, the breath relaxes. And let go of thought, any thoughts that might be coming into the mind. And just be the witness of them. Draw your attention into the body relaxing, the breath softening.
Good, and begin to deepen your breath. Allow a little movement into your fingers and toes. Slowly then roll to your right side, pause there for a moment, take your time. And then bringing yourself up into a comfortable seated position. Hands then come together, connecting your thumbs to your heart. Close your eyes. Again, reinforcing that connection to the earth, to the ground. Feel a sense of foundation and stability. Feel a calm stillness that the whole body is slowing down. And may you feel a sense of peace from that grounded, calm space. Namaste. Job, you guys.